Infertility treatment? That's a waste of money. The fact that we can't have children is your fault. My husband showered me with verbal abuse and dropped a huge bomb on me at the end. I'll divorce you. A wife who can't conceive and marry your sister instead. Yes, my husband chose my sister over someone infertile like me. My name is Gloria. I live with my husband, Jimmy. The days spent together after marrying my beloved husband were happy. It was happiness in its own way. However, as a couple, we struggled to conceive. It was about two years into our marriage when we began discussing infertility treatments. Hey, Jimmy, I've been thinking about having a baby soon. Hmm, but you know... Jimmy responds with an unenthusiastic demeanor. Infertility treatment has its own challenges, right? It's not just about the physical aspects. The costs can be substantial, too. That's true, but if it means we can have a baby through treatment, I think it's okay to rely on the power of medicine a little. Well, that might be true, but... While not outright rejecting infertility treatment, Jimmy doesn't seem eager to actively pursue it. Because of my husband's job transfer, I became a full-time homemaker. So there's probably financial anxiety as well. Jimmy, don't worry about the money. It's been six months since we moved, and I'm getting used to this place. I'm thinking about finding a job soon. If I start earning, we won't have to worry so much about finances, right? Once I start earning an income, we'll have more to live on than we do now. Then, I'm sure my husband will be more open to the infertility treatment. But my husband reacted differently than I expected. Well, I mean, if you're going to work, Gloria, that's not a bad thing. But? Looking for a job just for infertility treatments seems a bit off. I mean, normally everyone just naturally gets pregnant, right? It's not that simple. Women's bodies aren't that straightforward. You often hear that if there's trouble having kids, it's usually because of issues on the women's side. Feeling a bit irritated by Jimmy's words, I respond. Yes, it's often said that it's the woman's fault, but infertility can also occur on the man's side. It could be due to alcohol, obesity, childhood illnesses affecting male infertility. In response to my explanation, Jimmy makes a displeased expression. Well, that might be true, but statistically, the chances are higher for women. I haven't had any major illnesses, and I don't drink excessively. Anyway, I don't think there's an issue on my side. So in other words, you're suggesting the issue lies with me? I didn't say that. I'm just talking about general probabilities. He doesn't explicitly say that issue lies with me, but it's clear that Jimmy thinks that way. However, the possibility of the issue being on my side is not zero, so I decide to undergo infertility testing at the hospital. Unfortunately, upon returning home, my mother-in-law was there waiting for me. Hey, Gloria, where were you? Despite being a homemaker, you shouldn't be wandering around outside. Hurry up and get inside, it's unbearably hot. My mother-in-law always visits unannounced to keep an eye on me, even if I manage the household chores properly. This area is dirty and this part is not up to standard. She criticizes various aspects of my house cleaning. I had no choice but to let her in the house, and as soon as she opened the door, my mother-in-law said, I heard you're going to undergo infertility treatment. Uh, why would you know about that? Of course, I heard it from Jimmy. Oh, is that so? I had planned to take some time before bringing up the topic of infertility treatment, so it was unexpected that my husband had already talked about it. You know, Gloria, the reason we allowed you to marry into this family is for our future heir, right? Yet even after two years of marriage, not being able to conceive a child... I don't understand why my son married you in the first place. 
I'm sorry I can't show you grandchildren, Mom, but from now on I'll work together with Jimmy to try and conceive, so... In response to my non-confrontational words, my mother-in-law let out a big sigh. Listen, Gloria, just putting an effort won't magically make you pregnant, you know. It's clear that the cause of infertility lies with you. Maybe you should consider divorcing or something. D divorce But... Well, isn't that the case? And Jimmy being infertile is just unthinkable. Like parent, like child. Not only my husband, but also my mother-in-law firmly believes that the cause of infertility lies with me. Seemingly satisfied with a verbal victory, my mother-in-law left that day. When I reported what my mother-in-law has said to my husband when he returned from work, he responded. See? Even my mom says there's nothing wrong with me, right? If there's infertility, I still think it's more likely on your side. He nodded, with a smug expression. It's probably futile to say anything to my husband now. He won't even consider the possibility of being at fault, even by an inch. I decided to wait for the results of the infertility test. A few days later, I went back to the hospital. There, the doctor revealed a surprising fact. So, there's no issue with you, Gloria. It... is that so? But then why? The doctor awkwardly continued. Have a good discussion with your husband. If you truly wish for a baby, I think it would be a good idea for your husband to undergo tests as well. Tests? For my husband too? While I can't definitively say there's an issue with either of you, achieving pregnancy is a collaborative effort between a couple. Just to be sure, it might be good for your husband to undergo tests. I see. I confirmed that there was no issue with me, and I felt relieved at the doctor's words. But more than that, how should I convey this to my husband? Trying to be indirect might just complicate things. The test results are out, so let's talk about it tonight. I sent this message and waited for my husband to return home. As I prepared dinner, my husband returned home after a while. Strangely, my mother-in-law was with him. Uh, mom? Why are you... I made the decision. When I told her the test results were out, she said she wanted to come along. My husband wore a confident expression. It seemed like he hadn't even considered the possibility of there being an issue on his side. Come on, Gloria. Tell us the results already. Well, I can already guess, though. With a smug smile, I straightforwardly conveyed. There was no issue with me. The doctor suggested that Jimmy should also undergo tests. Huh? Why do I have to? In an unexpected turn, my husband visibly became displeased. Why? Because having a baby is something a couple should do together, right? Since there was nothing wrong with me, now it's your turn to get tested. What's with that? Are you saying it's my fault? No, it's not like that. I just want us both to get tested. And if there's no issue on either side, then we can be reassured. If, however, there's an issue with you, we can seek appropriate treatment. As I desperately tried to calm down my angry husband, my mother-in-law interjected again. Enough already. Jimmy has always been in good health. He doesn't have any physical issues. I don't think Jimmy is the cause of your infertility. My mother-in-law seemed to be completely ignoring my words, adamant that there was no issue with her son. To convince both of them, I showed the medical report I received from the doctor. I got this today. It clearly states that there's no issue with me, right? However, my husband and mother-in-law merely glanced at the report without bothering to read it. They seemed unwilling to accept the truth. Finally, my husband began spouting outrageous arguments. Since women are the ones who get pregnant... It must be your fault. Wait a minute. I showed you the medical report, didn't I? 
Then my mother-in-law, appearing exasperated, shrugged her shoulders. You probably forced it yourself, right? Doing something like this just because you don't want a divorce. Gloria, you're truly a frightening woman. What? Why would I do something like that? Don't say weird things. Please. Ignoring my protests, my mother-in-law and husband continued their conversation. Hey, Jimmy, wouldn't it be better to go for a younger girl? Well, at this point, I don't really care. Timing is good. Oh, that matter? Well, that's true. They say better late than never. That matter? What on earth are they talking about? A few minutes later, my husband uttered something unbelievable. Actually, I got your sister pregnant. Huh? I found out about her pregnancy recently. If I'm infertile, your sister shouldn't be pregnant, right? You got my sister pregnant? Confused and overwhelmed, my mind couldn't keep up. Ignoring me, my husband continued. So here's the plan. I'm thinking of marrying your sister, Serena. Mom also wants to see grandchildren soon, you know. My head turned blank, and I felt like collapsing on the spot. Is my husband having an affair with my sister? Moreover, impregnating her and planning to marry her? Wait a minute. Serena is still a college student, isn't she? Besides, she doesn't even have a boyfriend. Yeah, but she started liking me. For a while now, we've been in a relationship. Since when? We've been involved for a while. My husband casually revealed this cruel information. While I was seeking advice for infertility, my husband was secretly involved with my sister behind my back. Abandoned by my husband and betrayed by my own sister. All the while confiding in my husband about infertility without a clue. As I stood speechless, my mother-in-law added insult to injury. Do you understand now? My son has a body capable of properly impregnating a woman. So, the cause is you. A wife who can't bear children is no longer needed. That's true. My husband also takes advantage of his mother's stance. If that's the case, the decision is to divorce you, Gloria. I've brought the divorce agreement, so go ahead and sign it quickly. Saying that, the husband happily handed me the divorce agreement. Are these people sane? Impregnating my sister and even remarrying? It's not normal. At that moment, an indescribable anger swelled inside me. Fine, I'll divorce. In exchange, I'll ask you to pay me alimony in full. Once the matter was settled, my husband immediately kicked me out of the house. Goodbye, infertile woman. I'll be happy with your cute sister. Days later, I returned to my parents' house and explained the situation. My father and mother were furious about this. But the truth is, my sister had long been estranged from them. So I was the only one who had any contact with her. Due to her overly free-spirited nature, my sister had caused a lot of trouble for our parents especially in terms of finances and relationships with the opposite sex. And after starting college, she was disowned by our parents. Even so, she was my one and only beloved sister. That's why I regularly invited her over for meals with my husband. I never expected that she would end up with my husband. My parents offered to call my sister and husband for a scolding, but I just told them, you don't have to do anything because I knew that even if they remarried, it wouldn't work out. And a few years later, I met Steve at my new workplace, married him, and gave birth to a daughter. As a happy family of three, we went out together. Hey, Gloria? I was suddenly approached. Huh? Jimmy? It's been a while, Gloria. The voice belonged to my ex-husband. He glanced at my daughter and current husband, then looked at me resentfully. Oh, so you've remarried. Good for you, finding a new partner. Mind your own business. How does it feel to marry someone's sister? Upon hearing that, my ex-husband immediately made a sour face. I knew it. Pretending not to know anything, I asked him. What's with that face? Aren't you happy that you got my sister pregnant and not me? Well... 
My ex-husband responded with a pale face. You know, that girl Serena was incredibly unfaithful. Even after giving birth, she kept cheating with my money. That's why we got divorced. I was forced to buy all sorts of baby items, and she even took the child with her. Oh, that must have been quite the ordeal. Although I said that, I had known about it from the beginning. My sister was involved in frequent affairs, causing numerous troubles, and each time she had begged our parents for money. Confirming that my daughter and current husband weren't around, my ex-husband suddenly turned to me. Hey, Gloria, how about giving us another shot? Huh? What are you talking about? As you can see, I've already remarried. But after all, that's just a stepchild, right? You don't have to force yourself to take care of someone else's child. I don't want any more kids, and from now on, let's live freely together. It seems he mistook my daughter as my husband's child from another marriage. This man still thinks of me as infertile. To this misunderstanding man, I confidently revealed the truth. What are you saying? That child is my biological daughter. Huh? His expression at that moment is unforgettable. He looked about five times more foolish than usual. But y you were infertile? Trembling and shocked, my ex-husband asked, and I calmly explained. Unfortunately, no. I married my current husband, and we conceived a daughter soon after. But more importantly, I wonder whose child my sister is pregnant with. Looking at my ex-husband with a mischievous smile, and his face turned pale. Hey, what does that mean? Nothing special. I was just curious. I've known for a while about my sister's promiscuous behavior. And besides, the cause of infertility might have been you. In other words, you were taken advantage of by my sister. Taken advantage of? Yeah. If a man is willing to marry and raise a child, anyone would have worked, right? But you misunderstood and fell into my sister's plan, getting remarried without even knowing you're raising a child from a stranger. W wait so you're saying I was used to beg for alms? My ex-husband collapsed on the spot, crying and clung to me. Please, Gloria, you're the only one for me after all. I've been abandoned by Serena and the child. Even my mom turned her back on me. If things continue like this, I'll end up all alone. I don't care. It's the result of your own actions. It's quite disgusting at your age, you know. Saying that with a disdainful look, I looked down on him. My husband slumped his shoulders, disheartened. Even after that, persistent Romeo emails continued to arrive from my husband. I was wrong. I want to start over. There's no one else for me but you, Gloria. Please, come back. I won't cheat anymore. However, without replying at all, I blocked him on everything. Later, it seemed my ex-husband had requested a DNA test for my sister's child. The result was clear. The child wasn't his. It seems that now he's in a state of seclusion, not going to work and, to top it off, even abandoned by his once supportive mother. Well, serves him right, I guess. Now, compared to the past, I have a precious family that is beyond comparison. I don't care about a man like him anymore. I will always be grateful to my husband for choosing me and for us becoming husband and wife. I want to spend my days putting my daughter first. My crazy husband doubts if our daughter is really his because she's not cute, cheats on me, and causes her harm. My daughter was rushed to the emergency room after a car accident. They say she ran out onto the road unexpectedly, but I for one I can't believe it. She's a very cautious girl. She was in a comatose state, and it was doubtful she would survive. I was praying to God for her safety, but my husband seems unconcerned that our daughter was in danger. He even started talking about money in case she passed away. My husband's attitude made me distrust him. Then, our daughter miraculously regained consciousness. Yet, in the midst of my joy, she confessed something to me. You know, my dad. Hearing this, 
all the relatives would later become furious. My name is Francis. I'm 35 years old. I work hard every day as a company employee. My family consists of my husband Tony and my 80 year old daughter Eva. We lived in a house together. I met Tony at a drinking party in a club I joined in college. We happened to be sitting next to each other and had a chance to talk. He was a bit of a goofball, but had a cheerful sense of humor, and he had many friends, both male and female. I really enjoyed talking with him, too. We hit it off right away and started dating. We continued our relationship after college and got married nine years ago and had a beautiful daughter. Tony and I are happily married. I have never had a fight with him. We lived happily ever after, or at least I thought so. My daughter Eva looks and acts exactly like me. Even when she was a baby, my relatives used to say she looked like me. As she grew older, she became more and more like me. My parents would say things like, It's like Frances is back from when she was a little girl. At first, I thought it was just their patronizing comment. But then, I checked my parents' photo album. I found that Ava looked exactly the same as I did when I was a kid. Even my mother's friends joked that we looked like identical twins. But while Ava certainly looked like me, she was smarter than I was. She was speaking quite well at the age of two. And she could read and write at an early age than the other children. Eva had many friends at school because of her kindness and leadership qualities. I may be a foolish parent, but Eva was smart and bright, and I loved her very much. Tony, on the other hand, seems to be unhappy about something with such a daughter because one day he jokingly said to me, It's kind of like having two Frances. She doesn't look anything like me. I wonder if she's really mine. I don't think she's that cute. His words offended me. I mean, if you're proud of your children's excellence, but to say she's not cute, what the hell kind of an idea is that? I was glad Eva was asleep when he said that. But she would have been absolutely heartbroken to find out that her father thought of her that way. And I didn't like the way he made it sound like I was cheating on him. So I argued with him. Huh, what a thing to say. She's our child. So don't say such a terrible thing about her not being cute. And what's this? Are you sure it's mine? What the heck? Can you even tell the difference between what you're allowed to say and what you're not allowed to say? Tony must have realized that I was really angry. Because he rushed to defend himself. I'm just kidding, just kidding. Don't get so seriously angry. I'm sorry. I won't say it again. Tony apologized, and I forgave him for the moment. I felt a little sorry that I had gotten a little angry too. But later on, I wondered. I wondered why I didn't scrutinize Tony's comment more at that time. I would regret it. Tony also works as an office worker, so we are both very busy. We have been sharing the household chores since the beginning of our marriage and have been doing well. However, he told me that his company's business was in a slump. In order to fix it, Tony has become even busier. Overtime work has increased, and working on holidays is commonplace. Plus, his salary and bonus were cut drastically. It was not unusual for Tony to have to stay overnight at work, and so his time at work was drastically reduced. I don't think it's fair to overwork employees this much, no matter how bad the economy is. I suggested to my husband that he change jobs. I've worked for this company for many years, and I want to support them. I'm sorry for the trouble I've caused you. But I can't just walk away when my boss and my co-workers are working so hard. The company's economy is going to pick up in a little while. 
so please bear with me for a while longer. I understand why he doesn't want to part ways with his boss and co-workers. So I couldn't say no to Tony's desperate request. I had to work more overtime on my end, because my husband was paying me less money for us to live on. I don't stay overnight like he does, but I still get home late. I like my job, and I'm doing it at my own pace, so it's not a problem. But Ever spends more time with the sitter, so I feel sorry for her. I'm sorry, Ever. Mom and Dad have been busy. When we get some time off, we'll go somewhere together as a family. I said this to Ever, as if I was trying to explain myself. But she never blamed me. Mom, I'm a strong girl, so I will be fine. And I'm proud of you and Dad for working so hard. My daughter tries to cheer me up like that, even though she must be lonely. She's just like me, in the way that I'm always thinking of others to the point that I start losing weight. I felt bad that she had to put up with everything, so I decided to give her a present. I bought Eva a smartphone. A smartphone might be a little too early for an 8-year-old, but my daughter was good with electronics. She could use my computer, my phone, and look things up. Maybe she has a talent in that direction. I figure that if she had her phone when I was away from home, we should be able to have a conversation online, even if I couldn't reply right away. Predictably, my daughter was overjoyed when I gave her the phone. I know it cost you a lot of money, Mom, but I'm glad. Thank you. Eva's smile made me happy too. Up until that moment, I had thought of the house as a busy but fun place to live. So I had no idea that such a big event would happen. I was working overtime at work that day. I was working, sighing and thinking how busy I was when my phone rang. It was a hospital calling. Your daughter has been rushed to the hospital. I was shocked to hear this information, and my mind went blank. In case of emergency, Eva carries a note with my phone number on it and keeps it in her bag. That's why the hospital called me right away. I told my boss what had happened and immediately took a cab to the hospital. When I arrived at the hospital, a nurse explained the details to me. She told me that she was driving along when she saw my daughter suddenly run out into the driveway. I didn't quite believe her story. Eva is a very cautious person, and it would never occur to her to run out into the road. However, the woman didn't seem to be lying. According to her story, it looked like someone pushed her out of the way. There are a lot of things to think about, but first of all, I just want my daughter to be safe. I was hoping that she would survive. That's all I could ask for. According to the doctors involved in the examination and treatment, my daughter had been hit on the head and was in a critical condition unconscious. They said it was a 50-50 chance that she would survive and that there was a possibility that she might not regain consciousness. Please be prepared for any emergency. When he told me that, I fell to the ground in shock. Why should my precious daughter have to go through this? A little later, Tony arrived at the hospital. When I explained to him about my daughter's situation, he looked down with a despairing expression on his face. Oh no, maybe something was troubling her, because why would she run out into the road on her own? I don't know. What to do, Tony? If she doesn't wake up, I will. Don't lose heart. I hope Ever survives. But if she's unconscious, you might want to prepare yourself. I don't know if I'm losing my mind, but Tony said he was ready to give up. That's when I noticed something. I thought I saw a grin on Tony's face before he turned his head. I thought it was an optical illusion or my imagination, and forced myself to forget it. 
later. My parents, parents-in-law, my brother and sisters-in-law came to the hospital to pray for my daughter's safety. We all waited in the waiting room and in the hallway, hoping that she would regain consciousness. But the next day, Eva did not regain consciousness. I was depressed, but my relatives encouraged me, saying, It's going to be okay, and you have to stay strong. I somehow managed to pull myself together. Eva was on the brink of death, and there was no way I was going to give up now. Eventually, it was decided that it was going to be a long day, so I decided to get our bags ready. The relatives disbanded for the time being, and I was left alone with Tony at the hospital. Then, he said something I couldn't believe. Eva is not going to make it, and now I don't have to pay child support. I'm going to take this opportunity to make this very clear, Francis. I want a divorce. With that, he offered me divorce papers with his signature on it. I was a guest at the offer, which was so sudden. Huh? What are you talking about all of a sudden? Eva might still be alive. And what the hell is this divorce thing all of a sudden? You've never acted like that before. In response to my question, Tony said, I've been thinking about it for a while. Does he have any idea how insane he sounds under the circumstances? I can't see you as a lady anymore. You are too serious for my taste. I'm not sure we can make it as a couple anymore. There was something in his words that stuck with me. Is it possible that you love someone else? I want to marry her. But I don't want to pay alimony and child support. Is that why you're asking for a divorce at this point? Well, that's not it. I... I just simply felt I couldn't go on living with you. Tony denies it, but his eyes are looking from side to side, and it's obvious he's lying. I was tempted to pursue this or that, but now was not the time. Right now, we need to pray for Eva's safety first and foremost. Let's talk about the divorce later, because right now, all I want to think about is Eva. That's what you're trying to get away with, isn't it? I won't be fooled. Now sign these papers. The relatives returned just as Tony was pressing me to do so. Tony rushed to put the divorce papers back in his bag. Apparently, he didn't want his relatives to hear about the divorce. I decided to go through with it because it was convenient for me. All that mattered now was Eva's safety. Please, God, please save Eva. Perhaps my prayers were answered. Because on the third day, she miraculously regained consciousness. My family and I wept and rejoiced. But Tony was pale and trembling. At that moment, he muttered to himself, Oh no, I didn't think. My husband's mumbling were so small that only I, standing nearby, could hear them. Why was he so upset? I would later discover the reason in my daughter's words. Eva's eyes were vacant, so I desperately asked her, Are you alright? She stared at me for a moment, and then told me something. Mom, you know, Dad pushed me into the road. Everyone in the hospital room froze at Eva's sudden revelation, and we all looked at Tony. He could not say anything. He was only shaking. From the way he looked, he knew his daughter was telling the truth. Furthermore, Eva wanted me to take the phone in her bag, so I took it out. She instructed me to check the audio with the recording function, and I did as she instructed. Then, suddenly I heard Tony's excited voice. I enjoyed our last date, Michelle. You are such a cutie. I'd stay with you forever if I didn't have a wife and daughter in the way. It was a voice that clearly indicated Tony was cheating on me. According to my daughter, 
She heard her dad talking to the woman he was cheating on me with at home, and immediately recorded it. Eva then confronted Tony. Do you have someone else you like besides mom? Tony stared at Eva with a scary look on his face. Don't ever tell mom. If you do, you will be in big trouble. I stared at Tony when I heard that. What the hell is wrong with you? Hey, Eva, it's a crime to record people talking without their permission. And Francis, did you buy your kid a smartphone? She's not ready for that yet, so don't spoil her. Tony is trying so hard to change the subject. Of course, I'm not fooled. Huh? Don't play games with me. Spit out the facts. I yelled at him. And Tony started making excuses for cheating on me. No, I wasn't cheating. I was just talking on the phone with a colleague at work. I don't care about that. Now I'm asking if you pushed Eva. W well, I wouldn't do that, would I? Tony tries to make excuses, but he's clearly acting suspiciously. His relatives are also looking at him with wide eyes. As if they too find Tony's behavior suspicious, my father and father-in-law are especially furious. You son of a! He punches Tony in the face, and the rest of the relatives yell at him. I can't believe you did that to your own daughter. You even cheated on your wife. Holding his beaten face, my husband started to cry and began to make excuses for the affair. I I wanted to marry Michelle. She's ten years younger than me. She's young and she's hot. It cost a lot of money to date her. This I later found out. Michelle is indeed young and pretty, but she's quite a scatterbrain. Tony lied about the company's business downturn so that he could go out with her. He was paying for her. I questioned him further. If I'd found out about the affair, you'd have to pay alimony in the divorce. So you hid the affair from me, huh? It's bad enough that that turp ad found out. You should have kept your mouth shut, but you recorded it. But you're trying to kill my daughter. You are out of your mind. But he refuses to admit that he tried to kill his daughter. Eva is lying. I wouldn't have pushed my own daughter into the driveway, would I? I'm not that evil, and I don't think anyone would believe on an eight-year-old kid like that. You are a coward to the end of the line to get away with it after all this time. My fists shake with anger. If that's what you want, I would do the same. I stood before him in an imposing manner. I heard where Eva had her accident. It's a pretty big street, and there are surveillance cameras all over the place these days for security. More and more cars have dash cams. Tony was puzzled by my sudden remark, but I didn't care. I continued, "I'm sure the police are checking the security cameras. If they don't find out anything, I will make a post on social media about that area, and to see if the dash cam caught your behavior." This is where Tony went pale. If you want, I will check out every store on the main street. I will show them your picture and ask them, "Have you seen this guy?" Then, we'll get to the bottom of it. Tony got panicky when I told him that. Don't do this. Then he started crying and telling me what happened. Michelle threatened to tell the company about the affair if I didn't marry her. If Eva was gone, they would never find out about the affair, and I wouldn't have to pay alimony and child support. That's what I thought. I stared coldly at Tony, who looked desperate. How could this man risk Eva's life for his self-preservation? I'm breaking up with Michelle, and I will work hard for you from now on. So please don't call the police. With these words, he finally lost it. What? How can I forgive you? I can't believe you would put your own daughter in an accident for the sake of your unfaithful partner. 
How can you say please don't divorce me or please don't tell the police? That's because I'm going to report you to the police. Of course, I'm divorcing you, and I'm getting alimony and child support. You are a disgusting person and a terrible father. Don't you ever come near me or ever again. Tony is sobbing on the floor, looking miserable, but no one was there to help him. Tony was later arrested, convicted, and sent to prison. I signed Tony's divorce papers and filed for alimony against him and Michelle, the woman he had been having an affair with. I also demanded child support. Tony's portion would be paid by my in-laws on his behalf. They said they will make sure he pays them back when he gets out of prison. But even if he gets out, Tony will have a tough future ahead of him. Michelle resigned from her job after the company found out about the affair. She also owns money to her parents, and has been paying me alimony. Her parents disowned her, and she's having a hard time making ends meet. She's now living in a cheap apartment, and working part time. I, on the other hand, have returned to my parents' house, and I'm living a peaceful life. Ever is recovering well, and was discharged from the hospital. Now I'm raising Eva with the help of my parents' support. I will continue to gently watch over my smart daughter's growth. My husband, who always prioritizes work, shouted, "I had to take time off work, so you should thank me." I decide to divorce, but thank you for everything until now. I said those words to my husband, handing him the divorce papers. And left the house. My husband is a workaholic who can't do a single thing around the house. Without me, he must be in trouble. You should realize how helpless you are. My name is Layla. I quit my job right after I got married and became a housewife. My husband Nicholas was my former boss, who had a reputation for being quite good at his job. Ever since I started working for Nicholas, he'd been helping me a lot. He was always there for me when I needed support. Eventually, we started going out for drinks. After that, we started dating without telling the company. We told the company when we decided to get married. When I opened up about my marriage with Nicholas, the female coworkers around me were quite envious. Nicholas wanted me to quit the job and become a housewife, so that's what I did. However, once we started married life, Nicholas gradually began to look down on me. You're so lucky to be able to eat with just lounging around at home, aren't you? Who do you think you owe that kind of life to? You should be thankful to me. If I went out on a weekday, he'd always look unpleased. Going out for lunch while I'm at work? Who the hell pays for the lunch? Think about it. I couldn't be bothered to go out with Nicholas in mind, so I gradually grew to stay home more often. Would I spend the rest of my life just sitting at home waiting for Nicholas to come home? No way. I was beginning to think that I couldn't go on like this. With a sense of crisis, I decided to work. But Nicholas wouldn't allow me to work part time. You're going to work? You're not happy with my salary? It's not that. I was desperate to clear up his misunderstanding. It just feels so suffocating to stay home all the time. You just want to work to take a break from staying at home. Don't you think you are taking the world too lightly? He accused me like that. But if I back down now. Nothing would change. I tried my best to persuade Nicholas. Finally, after all my hard work, Nicholas agreed for me to work part time, on the condition that I would not cut any corners in the housework. I was nervous about working outside the home for the first time in a long time, but it was a refreshing feeling for me since I had always stayed inside the house. I tried my best to do the housework after my part-time job, 
so Nicholas would not complain. I was exhausted at first, but gradually, I found the pace that was right for me. It was around that time that Nicholas' mother passed away. I told my employer the news and asked if I could take some time off until things settled down, and they graciously agreed. I traveled back and forth between his parents' house and my own to take care of my father-in-law's personal needs and to prepare for the funeral. After the funeral, Nicholas said, "From now on." You only need to go to my parents' house every other day. You don't have to do the cleaning and laundry every day, right? You can make extra food for my dad, so that he would just have to heat it up before he eats. He seems to be worried that I would neglect taking care of our house by going to his parents' house every day. If I have to take care of my father-in-law every other day for the rest of my life, I wouldn't be able to work part time anymore. When I complained to Nicholas about this, he responded with a tedious look on his face. It's the same weasel without one or two part timers, right? Why don't you ask them to reduce the number of days you have to go? And if they say that it's not possible, why don't you just quit? It doesn't make much money anyway. It's just a way for you to relax. I had no choice but to reduce the number of days. And continue working part time. I felt bad to have to ask them to adjust so many times. I wish my father-in-law could at least take care of himself, but my father-in-law is stubborn, and says that it's a woman's job to take care of the house. He refuses to do any of the cleaning or laundry, and he is very picky about the taste of his food. Even if I cook something for him, he says it tastes too strong. Or he wants something else. Thanks to this, on the days I went to my father-in-law's house, I often came home late. One day, my father-in-law said that he didn't want to eat stew two days in a row, so I made him another meal, and thus I came home very late. You're so late. What are you doing? Where's my food, Nicholas? Who had already come home shouted angrily, "I'm sorry, your father wanted something else to eat, so I had to make another meal again in a hurry. I will get dinner ready right away." I served the stew I brought back to him. What the hell? You promised you'd take care of the house like you've always done, right? If this happens again, I will have you quit your part-time job. Wait a minute. The reason I'm late is because I was at your father's house. This has nothing to do with my work. Shut up! You can't afford to get dinner ready because you work part time. Don't make me wait for you after I'm tired from my work day. I didn't agree, but I knew he wouldn't listen to my arguments. I continued to sleep less to do housework, take care of my father-in-law, and work part time. Then one day. I received a rare phone call from my mother. Layla, um, your father has been diagnosed with a disease, and he's going to be hospitalized. She said that my father's cancer was spread pretty badly, and that it was already beyond treatment. I wanted to come over right away, but Nicholas wouldn't take me up on it at all. What can be cured can be cured. Just because you went to visit him. You've got to take care of the house. I had no choice but to leave work early to visit my father. It was six months later that my father took his last breath. I made arrangements for the funeral on behalf of my mother, who was too shocked to do anything, and told my husband the date of the funeral. So, you will be back by the time I get back, right? He asked me coercively. I don't want to have to wait for dinner again like I did the other night, okay? What? You're going to attend the funeral too, right? Huh? Of course I can't. It's a weekday, right? I have to work. My father passed away. Shouldn't you be able to take the day off for bereavement leave? Well, technically, it's possible. 
But I have an important meeting. I can't take the day off that easily. Easy? When a family member dies, your priority is to send them off, right? After your mother passed away, I had to take days off in addition to bereavement leave. And even now, I have to work less, you know. Nicholas snickered when he heard those words. Don't compare your part time job to my job. I have more responsibility than you will ever understand. I can't just take a day off like you work for fun. I persisted, and he finally relented, as if it was too much trouble to talk back. I will take a half day off if you insist. With that, Nicholas forcefully ended the conversation. I had to go to my parents' house more often to prepare for the funeral. And I had to take more days off from my part time job. I visited my father in law every three days, and I only could do housework for our house every three days as well. Nicholas became even more unsatisfied. Hey, you've been slacking on the housework lately, haven't you? You haven't cleaned the house for the last two days. That's because I tried desperately to explain to him. Two days ago, I was at my parents' house from morning till night helping my mother. And yesterday, I was at your father's. An excuse again? My dad's a man, so it's natural that you need to go do the housework for him. Your mother has been doing chores until now, right? What else is there to do for her? She's so shocked by what happened that she doesn't have the energy to cook by herself. And preparing for the funeral is a burden for her to do alone. I just want to be there for her as much as possible. He told me that I was far too soft on her. Your father didn't die suddenly either. I'm sure she was prepared for it from the moment he was diagnosed. And yet, she was so shocked that she can't do anything on her own. She's so naive to not think about the future. Why are women like that? How can you? Even if she knew his future was short because of his illness, her husband of many years passed away, you know. You at least understand how my mother feels, don't you? I'm telling you to accept the reality. He should have better prepared for his passing. It's irresponsible of him to go off on his own without training his wife. That's no way to talk about them. Don't you have any respect for my family? Nicholas looked at me, quietly angry inside, and said in a mocking tone, What part of your family do I have to respect? If I have to respect them just because they are older, isn't the thought of that naive? I can't believe he would even say something like that, not only about my mother, but also about my father who died after a battle with illness. It was at this point that I completely gave up on Nicholas. Enough. I don't want to talk to this man anymore. Just being in the same space bugs me. I started preparing to leave the house quietly, disguising it between helping for the funeral preparation. I moved my belongings into my parents' house little by little so that he wouldn't notice. It was painful to tell my mother about my current situation. Since she had just lost her husband. But I couldn't take it anymore. I told my mother that I'm having difficulty getting along with Nicholas and that I want to leave house to return to my parents' house. My mother consoled me by saying, You've worked very hard, Leila. If you want to come home, you are more than welcome. I won't be so lonely with you here. Thank you, Mom. I think it's better for you to be free of Nicholas than pushing yourself to live together. I'm sure you will find happiness in your new life without Nicholas. With these words from my mother, I was ready to leave the house. After that, I was mindless at home and perfectly took care of my father in law. I am only a few days away from being free from my husband. As long as I did the housework properly, Nicholas never complained, and we didn't need to have unnecessary conversations. The day of the funeral, 
Nicholas went to work that day without even saying goodbye. So Nicholas did decide to go to work. My mother was disappointed. Even though she's heard about it from me, she thought he would take a day off from work at least for a time like this. That's what she was hoping for. Do you understand now? He's like that. In response to my cold remarks, my mother responded with, If that's the case, I guess it can be helped. We were once again convinced that I had made the right decision in divorcing Nicholas. After the funeral, Nicholas returned from work as usual. I'm home. Oh, you're back. Nicholas yelled at me as I answered him curtly. You're back? Is that all? Whose fault is it that I had to take half of the day off today? You should thank me first. Thank you? Yeah, that's right. Your family interfered with my work. Now say it. Nicholas was sprawled out on the couch, waiting for me to say something. I'll bow to him. Thank you for everything until now. Yes, yes. You should have been humble like that from the beginning. Then I wouldn't have said anything either. Huh? What did you just say? Until now? What do you mean? I immediately passed him the divorce papers as he looked puzzled. What? Divorce papers? What does this mean? It means exactly what it says. Divorce. Then Nicholas suddenly burst into laughter. <laughs> you can't live without my money. What are you talking about? If you've got time to joke around like this, get on with making my meal. I'm serious. I'm leaving here and going to live at home with my mother. My mother has agreed as well. I have some money saved up from my part-time job. They are even considering making me a full-time employee if I agree. What? A full-time job? An idiot like you? Well then, I handed the divorce paper to Nicholas and left home with one briefcase in my hand. When I arrived at my parents' house, I fell asleep while talking with my mother about the hardships I had gone through and the memories with my father. After that, Nicholas tried to contact me several times, but I ignored all of them. The message was still supercilious. You are an unfit wife to leave your husband like that. If you apologize and come back, I will forgive you this time. It's no wonder. I had no interest in replying to his messages. Even if I ignored the messages, Nicholas never came to my parents' house. He would have been too proud to pick up his wife himself. Thanks to him, my mother and I were able to lead a peaceful life. A few days later, I realized I had forgotten something and sneaked back home while Nicholas was at home. Looking at the house after a few days, the house was in a terrible state. The house was covered in trash and this, and there was no place to walk. The kitchen was littered with delivery food trash, and wrinkled clothes were all over the floor. I had expected this, but it seems that he does not do any housework at all. Come to think of it, I wondered how his father was doing. I became curious and wandered around Nicholas' parents' house. There, I came across my father-in-law and the owner of the house talking at the entrance. Apparently, the neighbors had complained about the strange smell coming from his room, which had been turned into the garbage dump. If the situation doesn't improve, you're going to have to leave. All right, I will go to my son's place then. That's what my father-in-law told the owner of the house. His son's place? Even if he goes to Nicholas' place, it's just one more man who can't take care of the housework. I think it's just adding more garbage. According to what the neighbors told me after that, he apparently packed up his stuff and went to stay with Nicholas. But Nicholas refused his father to move in and had a small fight. The neighbors were unhappy over their argument, and Nicholas had no choice but to give in. 
It was good that they decided to live together. But as expected, Nicholas' house was trashed, and there was a strange smell in the neighborhood. Nicholas started going to work in a wrinkled, dirty shirt. His reputation among the people around him has been declining rapidly. Finally, there was even talk of a demotion, and Nicholas came to me to apologize. Layla, I'm sorry. Nicholas, he finally understood. That's what I thought. Are you done now? He said it like he was belittling me. I apologize for once. Just get yourself in a better mood and come back. Nothing had changed. What the hell are you apologizing for? Huh? What are you talking about? It wasn't a performance with no feeling, was it? Nicholas fell silent at my calm tone. Please go home alone. I have no intention of returning to that house. But the house is a mess without you. I even have to take care of my dad. I knew you would say something like that. The only reason you want to take me back is so I can take care of you and your dad. Isn't that right? No, no, well. I know you think you're a good worker. But no matter how good you are at your job, if you can't take care of yourself, you're no better than an elementary student. What? What? How dare you talk to your husband like that? You're not my husband. Ex husband, because I'm divorcing you. So we are strangers now. Wait a minute. I'm not divorcing you. I'm not your slave, so shut up. You always look down on all housewives. An old fashioned man like you should be buried in a stinking garbage dump with your father. Don't ever come near me again. You're just a lousy man who has nothing better to do than to be bossy. I dropped Nicholas away angrily and immediately locked the house. I turned around and my mother applauded. Well said. I then moved on to divorce settlement. Fortunately, the negotiation for the full time position went smoothly. I would be able to earn enough money to live with my mother. My mother, who had been depressed after the loss of my father, is gradually regaining her energy now that I have come back. She and I are enjoying our life together now. According to the lawyer, Nicholas and my former father in law are still living in that dump. They are looked down upon by the neighbors as a father and son who can't even take care of themselves. Because of the garbage, Nicholas can't sleep well and is always short of sleep. As a result, he has trouble concentrating and made an unforgivable mistake at work. He was forced to resign from his job to take responsibility. Now that they can no longer afford to hire a housekeeper, they do not have a bright future ahead of them. Now I feel like a fool for trying so hard to please Nicholas. I'm very happy to have escaped from the life of putting up with so much. From now on, I will live my own life to the fullest. My house caught fire during my business trip. My husband claimed to be at home, but when I rushed back, I discovered he was cheating on me. Your house, it's on fire. While on a business trip, I received a sudden call from my childhood friend. I couldn't believe it. My house was on fire. However, I heard sirens in the background of the phone, and my heart skipped a beat. Hurriedly returning from my business trip, I faced yet another betrayal from my husband. My name is Carol, and I'm a 32 year old ordinary housewife working for a well known company. My family consists of my husband, Gerald, whom I married seven years ago, and our daughter, Riley, who just turned five. We both work, so we've been helping each other with housework and childcare. Originally, I was dedicated to my job and my husband's support was essential. Fortunately, my husband is an understanding person. He accepted my wish to return to work immediately after giving birth. I know you love your job, Carol. I think it's good to work while you can, above all. Thank you, Gerald. But if I return to work, there will be overtime and business trips. 
I'm afraid it might be a burden on you, Gerald. That's not a problem at all. We're a married couple, so we should support each other. But what about Riley? Riley is my child too, right? As a father, I'll gladly take care of our daughter. I see. Okay then, let's do that. Thank you, Gerald. So I gave birth to Riley and returned to work six months later. Now, our daughter is almost five years old. I can continue working actively, all thanks to my husband. Additionally, we have a goal to purchase our own home. The last few years have been especially thrifty. Thanks to this, our savings are steadily growing. By the time our daughter enters elementary school, we should have reached our savings goal. My daughter also seems to understand, even at a young age, that I am busy with work. She always sees me off at the entrance whenever I leave the house. Mom, take care. Thank you, Riley. Do your best at daycare too. Good luck at work, Mom. I have dance and drama practice today. A school play is coming soon, isn't it? I'm looking forward to going to see it. Yep, I'll do my best. <laughs> well then. I'm off then. I never forget to give my daughter a hug and say goodbye. Embracing my daughter every morning makes me feel determined to face the challenges of the day. On one particular day, I was informed of a three-day business trip. With my husband at home, there was no need to worry about our daughter. She had gotten used to my occasional business trips before, but on this day, she seemed oddly somber. What's wrong? Riley, mommy's about to leave. Um, when will you come back? I'm going on a business trip starting today. I'll be back after you've slept twice more, maybe? I see. What's wrong? Are you feeling lonely? Yeah, because I'll be alone at night. Huh? What are you talking about? Dad is here, right? Dad, at night... Just as my daughter was about to continue, my husband appeared from the hallway asking, Aren't you leaving yet? I couldn't help but inquire about what my daughter was about to say. Hey, Gerald, usually when I go on business trips, you stay at home, right? Huh? What's with the sudden question? Of course, isn't that obvious? Right. And just now? Riley says she'll be alone at night, so I thought you might be going out. No, no, there's no way I'd do that. Leaving Riley alone at home when she's here? Of course not. Don't worry, I'll take good care of her during your business trip. Yeah, that's right. Thanks. So, can I count on you for the next three days? Absolutely. Take care, Carol, and have a safe trip. Thanks. I'll be going. I trusted my husband's words and headed for the business trip. As I closed the front door... I was concerned about my daughter's lack of energy, but I attributed it to the temporary loneliness caused by my absence as a mother, so I decided not to think too much about it. I then finished all my work on the business trip and then headed to the hotel for the night. Phew, I'm tired. My stomach isn't too empty, so I think I'll just go to bed early today. I took a shower and then lied down without having even dried my hair. At that exact moment, my phone rang. On the screen was the name of my childhood friend, Malia. She works as a freelance makeup artist. Even though we're close friends, why would she call at this late hour? It's already past 10pm. Could Malia have had a fight with her husband or something? Thinking about that, I answered the phone, and her flustered voice comes through. Carol, wait! What are you doing right now, and where are you? Huh? Molly up, what's going on? Why are you so flustered? What's going on? Where are you right now? I'm on a business trip today. Business trip? Come back right now. There's a fire at your place. It's spreading inside the house. F fire At first, I couldn't believe it was true, thinking it might be some kind of prank. However, hearing the sirens in the background, I became convinced that it wasn't a joke. Despite being shaken, I managed to utter some words. Wait, wait a moment. Gerald and Riley are inside the house at this hour. That's... Riley has been rescued, but 
They can't find Gerald. What? Gerald is? They're still firefighting, so I don't have all the details. But just come back. Riley has been crying the whole time. Riley. Despite being shaken, I hastily packed my belongings and caught a taxi. Honestly, I don't remember much about what happened afterward. After contacting the company, I repeatedly called Gerald, but couldn't reach him. What should I do if something happened to Riley and Gerald? Please, everyone be safe. My sound of my heartbeat resonated loudly in my ears, and the time I until I reached home felt incredibly long. Upon arrival, I frantically searched for my husband and daughter. Gerald! Riley! Where are you? Then with a shout of, Mom! My daughter jumped into my arms. Riley, I'm relieved you're safe. M mom it was scary. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It must have been terrifying. <laughs> Although covered in suit in places, my daughter seemed to have no major injuries. Holding her, I felt relieved, and tears welled up in my eyes. Malia, my childhood friend, brought over a firefighter and explained the details of the incident. It seemed the cause was an electrical leakage. Only a part of the house had burned, but the bedroom's window glass was shattered, and everything was charred black with soot. If they had been a bit late, my daughter's life might have been taken. Just imagining it sent shivers down my spine. Then I realized something important. I grabbed my daughter by the shoulders to locate my husband. Riley, where's dad? He was in the room with you, right? Then my daughter murmured, quietly looking down. Dad's not here. What? What do you mean? He was in the house with you, right? Dad... Dad said he had to go because there's a baby. A baby? What's that? While I was having this conversation with Riley, Malia, who had been observing, spoke hesitantly. You see, Carol, I was talking to Riley earlier and I noticed something. Yeah? Gerald has been leaving Riley alone at home quite often lately. What? Why? I don't know, but if what Riley said is true... A baby? Could it be? Unpleasant thoughts came to my mind. Leaving Riley alone at this hour without telling me that my husband has an important baby and that I still can't get in touch with him? All of it seems strange. I'm not pregnant and a baby with another woman? Gerald of all people? Cheating? Palpitations and dizziness hit me all at once with a reality I had never imagined. As I stood there stunned, my phone rang. On the screen was my husband's name. I rushed to the phone. Hello? Oh, Carol. Sorry, I couldn't answer the phone. I just found my smartphone stuck next to the bed. Hey, where are you right now? Where? I'm at home. What's up? I see. And Riley? It's midnight already. Obviously, she's asleep. Did something happen? Feeling lonely, perhaps? Don't worry too much. If anything happens, I'll protect both you and Riley. My husband casually uttering irresponsible words, indifferent to the household turning into ashes. Moreover, I could hear a woman's giggling laughter in the background. He believed I was calling for my business trip without a hint of suspicion. I became convinced of my husband's infidelity and anger started to boil inside me. I won't forgive him. It's one thing if it's just me, but... Exposing Riley to danger? No way. In that moment, I resolved to take revenge, no matter what it takes. Thus, I decided to take revenge on my husband. After confirming that the fire was extinguished, I took my belongings and went back to my parents' house with my daughter. Although my unexpected visit surprised my father and mother, I had to convey even more shocking facts. I put my daughter to sleep and explained the whole series of events to my parents. So, um, Gerald's affair came to light because of the fire. That idiot doing such a thing. Unbelievable. Leaving behind little Riley to meet his mistress. Expressing their dismay, my parents continued to speak, and I interjected. 
And according to Riley, Gerald says something like, I have to go because there's a baby. A baby? Could it be? Yeah, probably. I think his mistress is pregnant, and there's a child between them. Furious at my husband's despicable actions, my father's face turned red, and my mother was left speechless. I wanted to cry, but there was no time to waste on such things. I calmly explained my revenge plan against my husband. Both of them were surprised, but quickly accepted it. Watch this. I won't let him have it his way. I'll make him regret it, for sure. The next morning, we decided to carry out the plan by returning to the apartment I once lived in. My parents and I hid in the closet, and my daughter waited at the entrance, ready for action. At that moment, with a bewildered exclamation, my husband unlocked the door, returning from his mistress's place. Welcome home, Dad. Upon hearing our daughter's voice, he rushed towards Riley. Oh, Riley, what happened to you? The whole house is black and you're soaking wet. Did something happen? Don't turn on the lights. Dad, I... It hurt and I was scared. Riley began to sob. Riley, what's going on? It hurt. It was scary. Hot. Help me, Dad. Hey, what happened? Well, first, let's turn on the lights. Gerald tried to turn on the lights, but due to the impact of the fire, they didn't work. He then attempted to illuminate the scene with his phone. Oh no, Riley, what happened to you? He backed away in shock. Yes, at this time, my daughter's face was covered with special makeup for burns. Malia, who works in the makeup industry, was consulted regarding revenge against my husband. She suggested this plan. My husband, unaware of the circumstances, was in a complete state of panic. My daughter slowly approached her father and delivered the lines as scripted. Dad, why did you leave me alone? The house got really hot and I was scared all by myself. The smell in the house. Could it be a fire? If you were here, Dad, I wouldn't be in this situation. It's all your fault, Dad. W wait, I get it. Just don't come near me. I'm not good with scary stuff. My husband has a strong aversion to things like ghosts and supernatural phenomena. Approaching him with a grotesque appearance, my daughter was nothing short of a horror movie scene. My husband fainted and even peed himself during my daughter's act. Once we emerged from our hiding spots, my parents and I found his phone beside him, thankfully unlocked. I extracted text messages and photos from his phone, successfully gathering substantial evidence of his infidelity. After a few hours, my husband woke up and was startled to see me and my parents. Girl, and your parents too? Finally awake, huh? I looked down at my surprised husband with his phone in my hand. I already know everything, so explain properly. Uh, everything? What? That you're cheating and there's a child from your affair. I have all the evidence. What? Gerald, tell the truth. Yes, you have an obligation to do so. Convinced by my parents, he reluctantly began to reveal the details of his affair. Several months ago, he started an affair with another woman and had been meeting her every time I was on a business trip. It turns out the affair partner is three months pregnant, but even at this point, my husband shows no signs of remorse. He spoke of something unimaginable, considering our daughter was involved. Even though there was a fire in the end, we're all safe, so what's the big deal? It's exaggerated. What? Are you serious about that? Shut up. What's the big deal if I'm serious? Don't joke around. I gave my husband a slap on the cheek, fighting back tears and venting out all the resentment I've been holding in my heart. Do you realize how scared Riley was because of you? Because you prioritized your affair, this is what happened. I don't mind divorcing you and letting you be with your mistress, but at least reflect about having endangered our daughter. I never expected things to turn out like this. What? Shut up. Because you were fooling around with that mistress like an idiot. That's why this happened, right? If you understand, apologize to Riley. Bow your head and comprehend what you've done. You trash of a man. With the overwhelming intensity, my husband's face visibly paled. He bowed deeply to me, our daughter and my parents. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't say anything anymore. I'll do as Carol says. 
After that, we divorced. For my ex-husband and his mistress, I demanded alimony. And separately, I sought child support from him. As a result, my ex-husband's savings were wiped out. And he was promptly dumped by his mistress. It seems the mistress wanted to claim the home funds my ex-husband and I had saved together. Once the divorce was finalized, she believed that if she married him, the property would be hers. However, instead of receiving any shape of the assets, she ended up paying alimony and child support, leaving my ex-husband with nothing. On top of that, she found herself in the position of paying his alimony, with no reason to depend on him anymore. Moreover, it appears her pregnancy story was also a lie. It seems she planned to cover it up with a convenient lie after their marriage. Even now, I still receive desperate emails from my ex-husband, who lost everything. I realized I was wrong. I finally understood that I love you, Carol and Riley. Please, I want to start over. The angels I should protect are only you two. I love you. I am not mistaken anymore. I will spend my whole life making you both happy. These creepy messages are met with silence on my part, and I am even considering blocking his calls. If that doesn't calm them down, I'm prepared to consult a lawyer. On my end, I decided to stay with my daughter at my parents' home. My parents are happy to have their grandchild living with them, so in a way, it has turned out to be a way of repaying their kindness. My daughter has fully recovered and happily attends daycare every day. This weekend, we are looking forward to the long-awaited school play. Mom, Grandpa, and Grandma... You must come to see it. It's a promise. My daughter smiles warmly at us. I will protect this child's smile for the rest of my life. Holding her close, I give her a tight hug.